Hello everybody, so let's play SpongeBob SquarePants the movie, the video game, or whatever this is actually called. Where's the box? One second. Oh god! Just gonna need to not stop in the cord. See, the thing about, nice thing about having a really long cord for your headset is you can actually walk around the room. We're gonna leave that thing. Um, here we are. Uh, yeah, it's just SpongeBob SquarePants movie. I've never really been able to name this or refer to this game without it sounding kind of weird to me because I, because I usually just end up saying the Song of Scarfens movie game or something like that. Not really sure why it is I'm sitting through all this. Who made this style stuff? We're gonna see that in credits, anyways. So you'll find a couple of things. Ooh. SpongeBob video. I'd never fear to see that as SpongeBob video game. Alright, new game. Yes, I would. It's really a rather good idea. No cheese. Alright, I'm actually just gonna shut up about things for a moment. Welcome to our little tale of woe, triumph against impossible odds, terror, and managerly responsibility. Our story begins in the calm waters above the town of Bikini Bottom. As we descend beneath the waves, we find another day. Wait a minute! Hold your seahorses! So yes, the uh, cutscenes in this game, the actual cutscenes, um... I can't believe this is happening here! It's horrible! ...are composed of still shots from the actual Son of Pants movie. My manager is here. Talk to me, Krabs. It started out as a simple order. A Krabby Patty with cheese. So what went wrong? When the customer took a bite. No cheese! Oh, this has never happened before! Get a hold of yourself, Eugene. I'm going in. So, the game's actually... Actually, the game actually stays quite true to the, uh movies, or to what goes on in the movie, uh, aside from adding a couple of small things. So, uh, if you've seen Battle for King Bomb at all, you'll be able to tell pretty quickly that this game's very similar. Um, just playing it in general. I think you might be able to actually get out of, of the level here, I don't remember if you can or not. I think you can. I don't care. Oh no! Oh crap, that's a problem. Okay. Uh, for example, these the weight things are the equivalent of shiny objects. So have the usual attacks, control scheme, animations even. Similar sound effects. Usual goo bit. Except now it actually hurts you. Neither Patrick nor SpongeBob can swim. So avoid landing in goo. Instead of underwear, you have patty patties now. Just another day in the life of a manager. You also find that uh, the various abilities. There are. I can only think of three abilities, I think. Two or three. Well, at least one. <laughs> Ability that you get in this game that isn't in Battle for Bikini Bottom. Um, for the most part, the actual core gameplay elements, or just gameplay elements in general, not just core, in this game are taken pretty much straight from Battle for King Bottom. The gameplay is almost identical. The format, however, given that... Oh no. The format, however, given that it's uh, all about actual linear story is, the game is linear. It's not open world or anything like that like it was in Battle for King Bottom. Which I personally don't like as much, but... Uh, I don't think it would have ended very well if had they actually attempted to make this game non-linear. This this looks like it was taken straight from every game on him. Actually, this tree here. Yep, you saw the boxes like uh, original. Almost everything you can you can see, and for our reason, if you jump into that button, it actually presses the button. I don't know why that is. Yeah, the buttons are still here from Battle for King Bottom. 
I'm just on anything you can imagine. Uh, instead of socks, we now have treasure chests, which are also known as extras. To see what extra you have just earned, go to the extra section on the options menu. Which are actually pretty different from socks. Aside from how they're treated in the pause menu, again, that tells you how many you've ha you have in that area uh, out of the total. They unlock what are called extras. I'm not going to watch that trailer. I'm not sure how... I'll show off the uh, art pack extras, at least. Probably not the sound packs. I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm going to get all extras or not. You can still grab onto ledges like that, uh, like you could in Belfry Bottom. Okay, the jellyfish apparently you cannot actually do contact damage in this game. Bell for King Bottom if you just can't, yeah, you kind of had to linger around close to them for long enough for them to actually hurt you. Um, there are every Tiki, or at least almost every Tiki if not, um, I don't think there's equivalent to Stone Tiki's actually. And um, now for King Bottom has an equivalent in this game. Um, wooden Tiki's being these boxes here. Shish Tiki's I know have an equivalent. There's also Thunder Tiki's upgrades. So, um, our little... What are they? Our shiny objects, or as they're called in this game, manliness things, I'm not actually sure. Uh, manliness points, I think. Uh, macho points give you... Actually, I think they're just manliness points. Um, if you get enough, you will get a upgrade point. See, whenever you get a upgrade point you can spend it on things um, the only use actually for those things or for manliness points that is is for upgrade points you can't actually spend them or anything like that that like you couldn't shine objects in Battle for King Bottom and you can spend them on your various abilities for Spongebob and Patrick there is no Sandy in this game unfortunately so no flying anywhere although Patrick does have at least one of Sandy's abilities so as you can see you can upgrade uh, our health uh, for both Spongebob and Patrick, which can be increased three times, up to a total of six, just like in the original Malvary King Bottom. Um, then there's each ability that, that they both get. Um, they both get three from the beginning, as you can see. Um, they can be upgraded once, um, and generally the upgrade is quite worth it. Uh, the, this game's color of the Bubble Bowl, at least, is incredibly overpowered. I'm not sure I'll get the Karate Spin. I can go with three... Patties for health right now, so I think I'm actually just gonna hold on to this upgrade point. Yeah, it's gonna tell me that I have that I can upgrade the whole time. Darn it! I don't wanna look at that. This is a job for yep, there's the old signs for wall jump. You don't see those wall sign sponge things on the wall anymore though for wall jumps, unfortunately. Controls exactly the same as it used to. Boom. Logic. And there's Patrick. Spongebob seems to enjoy this. So much. Oh, you also have combos just like you did in uh, Battle for King Bottom with destroying lots of things at once. Um, referred to as Macho Smash, stuff like that. There are some, in general, there are some improvements in this game that I found, like, uh, for example, in Balfour King Bottom, there are certain things that characters would say um, upon encountering different types of enemies. Um, and that's pretty much all they had for the different things they would say, along with like pressing buttons and stuff like that. Whereas in this game, uh, there are a lot of lines that the characters have, or Sandra and Patrick that being, um, when you go into different areas and things like that. This is a Goofer Goober token, which is this game's equivalent of a Golden Spatula. There are actually only 70, I believe. I'm the manager of this establishment. Everything is gonna be just fine. I'm really scared, man. You got a name? Bill? <laughs> I really don't like cutscenes in this, I'll be honest. Only got one shot at this. Gotta have the right tools for the job. Bingo. Now I want you to do me a favor, Bill. What? Say cheese. Uh, and they skip out the dramatic part. A little yellow friend oh my god, Gary. Slumber ...and prepares for the biggest day of his life. Yet despite his dreams, 
he is not honored with the manager position of the new Krusty Krab 2. So he sulks off to drown his depression in ice cream at the local Goofy Goovels. Across the street, jealous of Mr. Krab's success, the diabolical plankton hatches Plan Z. He steals King Neptune's crown and frames Mr. Krabs for selling it to the far off and dangerous land of Shell City. Let us now join our heroes in the midst of their self pity. Yes, so the cutscenes are a bit kind of oversimplify the story, things like that. I think some bits of the story you won't really get if you haven't actually seen the movie itself. Hey, hey buddy, come on, wake up. Huh? Where am I? It's eight in the morning. Close. Looks like your friend is out of here. Hey, buddy! Come on up here and join the party! Oh no. The game being in a linear format at least uh, allows the game to logically uh, give you different costumes in, s in certain areas. Uh, so jobs, manager costume, and this included. So it turns out that this game actually has a decent number of glitches as well, or at least unintended things you can do if you uh, push the your uh, platforming capabilities. This is the same song that was played uh, by the what was it? the uh, sonograph in. Uh, Sonograph? I probably just embarrassed myself by saying something really stupid. Um, in, Balfour, in Patrick's Rock and Balfour Key Bottom. So yes, those things that I just encountered um, are actually... I don't remember what they're called in this. They are the equivalent of... Well, the dogs. I don't remember what those are called. In Balfour Key Bottom. Bikini Bottom. Uh, you will find some, equi some enemy equivalents in this game to uh, enemy to the rods from Bobby King Bottom, but um, there are plenty of original enemies as well, Much of, most of which are actually incredibly annoying. Seem to even use the same effect for uh, the breath. Bring up two. Ah, there's one particular ability that I'm lacking with Patrick right now that I am sorely missing. Fortunately for us, though, it's the one that we get next. Yeah, I haven't seen the end of the similarities, though, in gameplay. What's up, Patrick? You have got to try this new dot room game. Dodge! Where? What? This game suits like a. So this is the equivalent to the hammer, of course. So he takes two hits for some reason. Yeah, whatever. So it's actually something I want to try to do. Um, speaking of um, being able to break uh, some things in this game. Turns out you can do that. What I want to do is... There's a f kind of a funny glitch that you can get if you sequence break this level and go through it to a certain point as SpongeBob. I wanted to uh, run through and get get that uh, bounce pad there first, so I can just bounce right back up here if I, if I fell off. If this takes me too long to actually do, I'll just give up, but it, the end result is actually pretty funny. Unfortunately, I can't show off this glitch later if I don't do it now, because you need to see, um, or, because, well, what happens, what, or what triggers a glitch, kind of, just doesn't, only happens there first run through of the level. That's also something I really don't like, uh, about the way this game is handled. Even though everything's all linear and all that, things, like events in levels only happen once still. So you'll still find yourself only able to see um, in 
in-level cutscenes once, for example. Or complete complete objectives within levels once, things like that. Uh, you can still warp around with this game's equivalent of the taxi by just selecting something uh, and pressing A like three times. Ah, oh, there we go. So, uh... Turns out, I'm actually at the end of the level. <laughs> this is the equivalent of the bus stop, allowing you to switch between Central and Patrick. If I was to pick up that to token right now, I'd actually complete the level. I don't have the Sonic Wave guitar ability yet. That's a long ways off. Anyways, so a couple things are going to be done a bit improperly now that I'm playing as Spongebob instead of Patrick, but nothing too bad. You can also actually attack in the air now that I'm Spongebob, so hooray for that. Oh, there's Spongebob. Hey, it's you two again. I missed you guys. <laughs> So these are this game's equivalent of the Duplicatotron, which, as you might figure, duplicates things. It's also possible, uh, like, very hard to actually jump to that uh, ledge right there. But like I said, it's incredibly difficult. And then from there, you can actually hit those four buttons and go in there and get another Goofy Goober token. I'll just get that properly, though. It's now open. Actually, you don't need the Sonic Wave guitar to get it. I never thought you need the Sonic Wave, Wave guitar to get it. The explosion is much bigger in this game than it was in Battle for King Bottom, by the way. You destroy those things, so be careful with that. And the design... I've noticed the design actually looks unique to uh, this area with those things, or with the, uh, enemy spawners. They actually do look unique to each area in the, in the game, which I find quite interesting and unique to what enemy they spawn. We're men. Uh, this game, I really don't feel it actually is necessarily, is what I would consider up to par with Battle for King Bottom, but it's still nice. I guess just seeing all the King Bottom stuff that exists in it. So if you have Patrick's Ground Pound ability, what you can do here is... Yeah, notice that I knocked that over a second time. What you can do is you can Ground Pound on here. And then it'll flip over again and be up on this side. You can hit it again and you can actually lock yourself in the room. What was that, pray tell? Oh, it's for me and Spongebob. Probably show you that costume later. I'm not actually sure what it is that... I should do to bypass this. I know you can bypass this though without using Patrick. Um, what he's supposed to do is he's supposed to use that ice block like uh, the swing hooks in Battle King Bottom. So he pretty much has Sandy, Sandy's uh, swinging ability. It's done the same way too, of course. What I remember seeing is that is they actually went across this way. Oh, here we go. Oh, I didn't know you could go on these. Oops. Hmm, I just thought about something completely unrelated to doing Let's Plays right now, and it's actually quite an interesting idea. Huh. God damn it! The voices in my head, or rather voice, agree with me that it's a good idea. I should write that down or something. Anyways. Yeah, whenever you see a big, like, colored thing, <laughs> you can just know that enemies are going to spawn from it. It's not really any big surprise when they fly out of it screaming. Here we go. All right, one second. Patrick, if you bring me more Goofy Goober tokens, I can grant you the cartwheel move. Oh boy, I love whatever that move is. You will. Just bring me more Goofy Goober tokens. All right, so yeah, if you actually get more Goofy Goober tokens, talk to her again. Well, hello. Oh, she actually recognized me as Spongebob. Um, I'll actually get called 
Patrick or Sandra will actually have Patrick's voice again. Um, so you can still go through the rest of this level as SpongeBob. But I'm not going to do that. Um, so I'm actually going to. I'm going to go to here. It should make me Patrick uh, again. I just wanted to show that one little bit with SpongeBob talking as Patrick, though. All right. We'll see plenty of SpongeBob throughout the game, of course, anyways. Explosion. More shiny objects for me, too. Did I get a second upgrade point? No, I didn't. Oh, look. An ambush. I am so surprised. I like how you don't even look at me. You just kind of attack each other. So, for one... Patrick, I have some naval lint. I'm sure you do. What the hell? Now then. So you'll find little blocks like this, little pads, uh, that you can go on to and press R, or whatever your equivalent is, depending on which system you're using. And they'll go warp you to various challenges, one of these being the combat arena. In which, oh yeah, normal SpongeBob. We haven't a or actually yet to see that in this game. Whoa! That was... Okay. In which you just kill lots of enemies, pretty much. It's not just simple survival. So, unfortunately, there's actually no uh, equivalent to the... Uh, what were they called? Alright. The most con... Like, the enemy you're first introduced to, or the robot you're first introduced to in uh, Balcony Bottom. Fodders, that's what they're called. There's no equivalent of them in this game, which makes it kind of sad. The most basic enemy is actually these fogger things, whatever they're called, that like to breathe. Well, most like to breathe, but still. Uh, also, it ha turns out that these, uh, the hammer g hammer enemies in this game are much more smart than they were in, uh, Battle for King Bottom, because they actually try to keep their distance from you as they're about to hit you, you'll notice. The combat arenas actually get a lot more, not necessarily dramatic, but intense, of course, once you actually fight some real enemies, particularly when you get into the uh, Marvins and stuff like that. Marvins? Are, are there enemies called Marvins? There are at least Mervs, I think, if I remember. You guys are a freaking pain in the ass, though. At least if you don't have the proper upgrades. Are you ready, kids? Yeah, they say that too in Valve King Bottom. You know, I'm sure that, the, that this grass texture is taken from Valve King Bottom on the ground here, all these rocks and all that. I think it just looks so much the same. I mean, there have to be plenty of things that they just straight up reuse from Valve King Bottom in this game. I'm not really saying that's a bad thing, even though it kind of is, because it's just damn lazy. I'm being hit, hit here a lot. Screw off, man. And this would also be a lot better if I actually had more ways of attacking. I kind of, I kind of like, like I said before, though, I like seeing it because I like Battle of King Bottom so much. So it's just kind of nostalgia stuff. Of course, nothing actually beats Battle of King Bottom, but in terms of being Battle of King Bottom, but. That sound. I hate hearing that. All the enemies always make the same sound, Dif regardless of what type of, or uh, like what the enemy looks like. They're different enemies have different. You'll find the same type of enemy having different kind of looks in different areas. They always make the same sound though, which gets so old. There's some sound clips in this game that just gets so goddamn old. For example, um. 
the uh, generic you fail theme for whenever you die or fall out of bounds or anything like that. You hear that in this game a lot. Believe me. Now it's a bounce. Oh, no. Oh, God. Okay. That was some hard-ass work there. Just about time I wanted to end off this episode, too. So I'm gonna run, run off back to Mindy, and, uh... We shall claim our reward. Actually, you know what? Screw that. Give me things. Okay. No, actually, I'm just gonna say something small as I'm bouncing up here. Well, I'll save it for next episode. It's like I'll forget to say it anyway, since I'm just gonna say bye and then say hi again. I'll just cut it myself. Alright, so see you guys next episode where we do more things and uh, learn what it is that Mindy is gifting to us, even though I think I've already spoiled it. You get to hear the thing I said I was gonna talk about, too. Bye, everybody!